I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system You revolve around me As we fly around the galaxy All of the planets in our solar system They orbit well, they follow me 230 million years is the time I take to fly around the Milky Way galaxy I don't have a solid surface so made up of gases held together by my own gravity I'm made of 92.1% hydrogen H2 and 7.8% helium HE I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of my total mass and 27 million degrees my energy is the reason there is life on earth there'll be no charge cause I'm totally free my mass makes up 99.8% of our solar system nothing in our system's hot as me I'm a star called the sun center of our solar system you revolve around me as we fly around the galaxy
2021 PH27 I am currently the new closest object to the sun I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked Discovered by Scott Shepard at the CTIO on August 13th, 2021 in the country of Chile, you know. Scott Shepard discovered me using the Dark Energy Survey, or DES for short. In space, I'm on display. I was discovered at apparent magnitude 19 from the Earth. Let me explain just what that means. Apparent magnitude is a measure of... Subject. I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked. My perihelion is closer than Mercury at the closest orbit to the sun. My aphelion is farther than Venus when my orbit is farthest from the sun. I have the smallest semi-minor axis of fun and shortest orbital period among all asteroids as of 2021. I take 113 days to orbit the sun. That makes me the fastest orbiting asteroid and I'm not done. I'm expected to be larger than one kilometer in diameter. Next to Mercury's diameter of 4,800 kilometers. I'm smaller. Professionally designated 2021 PH 27 while orbiting the sun by the minor planet center on my run. None of this info would be possible without astronomers. Maybe you could study astronomy. It's out of this world, I'm sure. I am 2021 PH 27. I am currently the new closest object to the sun. I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object. I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked. I am 2021 PH 27. I am currently the new closest object to the sun. I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object. Did you know the place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone? It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Goldilocks Zone is a habitable zone in an area around a star you know. The zone is not too hot and it's not too cold for liquid water to exist so life can grow. There is only one planet we know so far that is teeming with life, of course. That planet that we're sure can sustain real life has a well-known name. It is the Earth. If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto, the sun would be the size of a pea. The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze. But if Earth moved to the position of planet Mercury, the Earth's water would quickly boil away. There would be no more life you see. The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable place where Earth sits from the sun. Allowing water to stay liquid, liquid water is the source of life. That's how life on Earth begun. Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home 
is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Systems, sun. I have an average diameter of 50,724 kilometers. I'm a frozen one. I am Neptune, the eighth and last planet in the solar system, as far as we know. I have an average diameter of 49,244 kilometers. I'm blue as shown. Our total planet diameter size when added up is 380,008 kilometers we share. We still have 2,492 kilometers of space to spare. We are the Earth and the Moon. And you will learn really soon. You could fit the planets in our solar system between us. This is true, we are the Earth and the Moon. We meant to tell you for a while the average distance between us. We will explain to you with a smile. Here's a moon-sized comparison in our solar system. We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done. We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit. We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit. My name is Tethys, I'm one of Saturn's 82 moons. My radius is 531 kilometers, it is true. I am Dion, I orbit Saturn, you do see. My radius is 561 kilometers, that is me. Ariel is my name, Uranus is what I orbit. My radius is 578 kilometers, I'm third on the list. I am Umbriel, Uranus is where I'm from. 
My radius is 584 kilometers, I am spun. I'm the moon of Sharon, I float in orbit Pluto. Radius is 606 kilometers, this I do know. I'm Iapetus, a moon of Saturn. Radius of 734 kilometers as I turn. Oberon is my name, outermost moon of Uranus. 761 kilometers is my radius. I am Rhea, Saturn's second largest moon. Radius of 763 kilometers. See you soon. Here's a moon size comparison in our solar system. We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done. We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit. We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit. Not Titania, the largest moon of Uranus 788 kilometers is my radius The name is Triton The largest moon of Neptune I'm 1353 kilometers in radius in this tune Europa is frozen and the moon of Jupiter My radius is 1560 kilometers I am the moon of the planet my radius is 1737 kilometers for what it's worth Hello I'm Io, the strangest moon of Jupiter With a radius of 1821 kilometers I'm Callisto, I orbit Jupiter you see My radius is 2410 kilometers, that's all on me Titan is my name, Saturn's my claim to fame 2574 kilometers is my radius Yes, I claim I'm gonna meet the largest moon in the solar system Jupiter is what I orbit, yeah, that's where I'm from My radius is 2634 kilometers now Let's listen to the chorus while the moons take a bow Here's a moon-sized comparison in our solar system We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done we're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit
objects brought to you here by Psy. Some within Neptune's orbit, others trans-Neptunian we fly. We're astronomical objects brought to you here by size. We all orbit the sun that may come as some surprise. I'm Phoebe, an irregular satellite of Saturn. I'd be my alternative name is Saturnine. You can see, discovered in 1899 by William Pickering. My diameter is 213 kilometers while I do my thing. I'm 10199 Caraclo, an asteroid with rings the largest confirmed small body of the outer solar system I sing. I'm possibly a dwarf planet with a measured diameter of 232 kilometers, I'm sure. I'm 38628, who ya, a minor planet in your system, or trans-Neptunian object is my technical term as I'm spun. You can find me in the Kuiper Belt in the outer solar system. My diameter is 406 kilometers, how fun. I'm 2008. 18 BG 18 of this I am sure A trans-Neptunian object don't leave there is more First observed in 2018 by three astronomers 500 kilometers is my known diameter My name is Vesta, I'm a minor planet You now know I'm one of the largest objects in the asteroid belt I do show I'm probably the second largest asteroid after Ceres I have a mean diameter of 500 25 kilometers, you see. I'm 2014 UZ224, a trans-Neptunian object and possibly a dwarf planet, but the IAU hasn't decided yet. Out in the Kuiper Belt, I was discovered. I am sure 635 kilometers is my diameter. I'm 20,000 Varuna, a large trans-Neptunian object. In the Kuiper Belt, I dwell in possible dwarf, but not yet. My elongated shape is due to my rapid rotation 668 kilometers is my diameter well spun I am Ceres I am a dwarf planet I'm the largest object in the main asteroid belt to orbit I am too dim to be seen by the naked eye for sure I am 946 kilometers in diameter my name is Senna I am a minor planet on the run I'm three times as far as Neptune from the sun my surface is one of the reddest among the solar system objects I'm 995 kilometers in diameter glad we met my name is Horror and I'm a dwarf planet candidate but for now I'm a non-resonant trans-Neptunian object I reside in the Kuiper belt it's so cold here Burr. and I'm 1110 kilometers in diameter and I'm 2007 OR10 that name it stood strong with the proposed name in 2019 of Gong Gong my furthest distance is 9.4 billion miles from the sun my diameter is 1230 kilometers as I run not my Maki, a minor planet I be. I'm perhaps the second largest object in the Kuiper Belt you see. I was discovered in 2005 by a team led by Michael Brown and currently 1430 kilometers in diameter and I'm round. Almea is my name. I'm a dwarf planet by fame. Beyond Neptune's orbit you can find me with some aim. I'm the third largest known trans-Neptunian object. I'm 1632 kilometers kilometers in diameter last I checked. My name is Ceres. I am a dwarf planet as well and the second largest dwarf planet in the solar system. How swell. Located beyond the Kuiper belt in a region called the scattered disk. My diameter in kilometers is 2326. I'm Pluto. I'm a big deal as the largest dwarf planet. I used to be the ninth planet in the solar system till I quit. I am part of the cold and lonely kind. My diameter is 2,376 kilometers, so I tell. We're astronomical objects, brought to you here by size. Some within Neptune's orbit, others trans-Neptunian we fly. We're astronomical objects, brought to you here by size. We all orbit the sun, that may come as some surprise.
There are 27 moons of planet Uranus We're the five largest moons, smallest, two largest we trust We're the five largest moons of planet Uranus The seventh planet in the solar system, let's not rush I am Miranda, also designated Uranus 5 And the smallest of the innermost five round satellites I was discovered by Gerard Kuiper in 1948 at the McDonald Observatory. It must have been fate. I'm Ariel. I rotate on Uranus's equatorial plate. Discovered in 1851 by William Lasso, as I explain. I'm the fourth largest of Uranus's 27 moons. Maybe someday you'll become an astronomer, so I will see you soon. I'm Umbriel. Discovered at the same time as Ariel by the famous astronomer William Lassell. My surface is the darkest among Uranian moons. I have a lot of impact craters I hope to see more soon. I am the Oberon moon, also called Uranus 4. I'm the outermost major moon of Uranus, that's for sure. I'm the second largest and second most massive of Uranian moons with a size like mine. To see me is opportune. My name's Titania, designated Uranus 3. The largest of Uranian moons and eighth in the solar system. See, 1578 kilometers in diameter IP. In 1787, William Herschel discovered me. There are 27 moons of planet Uranus. We're the five largest moons, smallest, two largest we trust. We're the five largest moons of planet Uranus. The seventh planet in the solar system, let's not rush. There are 27 moons of planet Uranus. We're the five largest moons, smallest, two largest we trust. We're the five largest moons of planet Uranus. The seventh planet in the solar system, let's not rush. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. I'm a molecular cloud. I'm a type of nebula. I have a high density and a very low temperature. This combination creates a gas molecular hydrogen. That's primarily what I'm made of along with cosmic dust within. When the force of gravity exceeds the outward push of gas, the pressure is so great that I can't help it and start to collapse, which is caused from a shockwave from a near exploding star. Or when two molecular clouds collide, now isn't that bizarre? When the gravity's too strong, I break apart into smaller clouds. Each cloud is a star's beginning in which I am very proud. Protostars are the name of the clouds that do break free. Let me introduce a protostar that was a part of me Hello there, I'm the beginning of any kind of star Let me introduce myself to you, I am a protostar My core is not hot enough for fusion to occur To achieve that level of stardom, that process is a chore The first thing I do when I break free from my molecular cloud I start to spin until I form this disc around me you see now As the Rotates, I produce a strong magnetic field Pulling gas and dust into my center core as I reveal The infalling gas releases a kinetic energy Creating heat, increasing the temperature in the center of me At this point I can transform into a hydrogen burning star Which is when the nuclear fusion starts in a protostar This is when I cross over to stage 3 called Titori We play our different roles in the star formation you see. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. I'm a T-Tori star now, also a pre-made sequence star. My
My job's to clear away the dust and gas and send it really far. My stellar winds create bipolar outflows that decrease my mass. Till I'm a main sequence star, my center burning nuclear gas. Now I'm a main sequence star, now just like the sun you know. For billions of years I will burn throughout my light show. Converting hydrogen to helium is how fusion exists. It wants to blow me apart but has a hard time doing this. Cause of gravity of equal power pushing me in. I'm able to stay burning since the fusion did begin. There are many different kinds of stars throughout the universe. Go learn about them. They are birthed. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution evolution of the star and all its basic changes. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know of course. I am Ceres, I am a dwarf planet Maki Maki's a dwarf planet as well but didn't plan it I am Hamea, a dwarf planet in this group Pluto is a dwarf but used to be a planet, it's true Ares is a dwarf planet in this mix The Earth's moon is where your eyes are transfixed Mercury is here, an official planet I'm the planet of Mars, I'm sure you all know this I'm planet Venus, my size you may think is large Planet Earth is next, and the humans think that they're in charge Neptune's a planet in our solar system, wow Planet Uranus is here, I wish I could take a bow Planet Saturn has rings, if you think I am big Check out planet Jupiter, I hope you can dig this is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know of course. I am the sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't far. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star. My name is Pollux, a red giant star, it's true. Arcturus is a red giant star, this I thought you knew. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Hi, I'm Rigel, a blue-white super giant, you see. I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red super giant in class. I'm in Tauris, I'm a red super giant that won't last. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hyper giant star. I'm U.Y. Scutai, the biggest red super giant this far. I am the Milky Way galaxy and you live in me. Now let's all sing the chorus together with glee. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know of course. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know of course. I have an official new moon Let me introduce MK2 To all the world and you Hello, I'm MK2 A satellite of Maki Maki I was noticed one year ago Now an official moon I be In the month of April In 2015 Is when I was noticed By Hubble's Whitefield Camera 3 The Southwest 
Buzz Research Institute led by Mark Boo. We are the first scientists in the world to ever notice me. I'm very hard to see because I'm in the Kuiper Belt and my charcoal colored surface certainly doesn't help. As 2015, 13, 64, 72, one is what I was provisionally designated, but not much fun. They officially nicknamed me with the name MK2. I'll tell you more about me after the chorus you'll hear is through. A Maki Maki, I have an official new moon. Let me introduce MK2 to all the world and you. Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki Maki. I was noticed one year ago now. Official moon I be. It's estimated my diameter's 100 miles across. That's an estimate only from a bunch of astronomers. I'm 1300 times more faint than dwarf Maki Maki. When a telescope gets closer, they will see me more clearly. I'm 13,000 miles from my dwarf planet, so bright, and I'm called a moon because I'm a natural satellite. Maki Maki had what scientists. Now they think it was me making those warm dots. A Maki Maki, I have an official new moon. Let me introduce MK2 to all the world and you. Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki Maki. I was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. A Maki Maki, I have an official new moon. Let me introduce MK2 to all the world. This is a total solar eclipse Don't see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this This celestial event is called a solar eclipse Let me tell you about it so you can understand all this A solar eclipse is caused by the moon in between the sun and the earth till black is what you see here are several stages and some visual tips that you can use to recognize a total solar eclipse stage one is called a partial eclipse is when the sun's disk is partially blocked by the moon like this stage two is called bailey's beats which are bright spots of light it's when low lying valleys on the moon's edge allow sunlight through that's right stage three is sometimes called the and ring the stage's key in which marks the last few seconds before totality the last bit of sunlight that is able to shine through the low-lying valleys creates a single flash of light on the side of the moon the fourth and most important stage is called totality when the moon completely covers the disk of the sun this is what you see then comes the final stages in which the sun will grow a crescent on the opposite side of the bailey's beads what's one time shown celestial event there's a few safety precautions for eye injuries to prevent this is a total solar eclipse don't see my narrow path in which i travel on the earth's surface this is a total solar eclipse my totality is awe-inspiring so don't miss this on monday august 21st 2017 there's a total solar eclipse north america will see the totality you want to see can only be observed from Lincoln Beach, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, so I've heard. The path of totality is 70 miles wide, they say, seen in 14 states in the continental U.S. of A. Totality lasts a few minutes, so be sure to be there and please use special safety glasses so your vision isn't impaired. You can buy these special solar eclipse glasses online, so protect your eyes from the sun. This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this A solar eclipse has several areas we need to discuss Take a look at this picture to learn each part is a must Darkened. 
A partial eclipse is what you're seeing right here When only part of the luminary of a celestial body is dark in there This is a total eclipse, it's red on your screen It's when the whole of the disk of the sun is covered That's what it means This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse my totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this. I'm the largest satellite in the solar system seen. I orbit Jupiter, my name is Ganymede. Larger than Mercury, Pluto, and slightly smaller than Mars. I'd be classified as a planet if I orbited our star. Let me introduce myself, I'm Ganymede. I orbit Jupiter, come and learn all about me. Out of all the known moons in the solar system, I am the largest by far until a larger moon comes. I was discovered by Galileo Galilei in the year of 1610 in January. If I orbited the sun instead of Jupiter, I'd be considered a planet by the IAU for sure. I am larger than Pluto and our planet Mercury, and I'm slightly smaller than Mars. As you can see, I do have an iron rich liquid core. I'm made of equal amounts of silicate rock and water. There is more. I have an eternal ocean that may contain much more water than all Earth's oceans combined, but no one knows for sure. I'm the only moon known to have its own magnetic field. I'm the ninth largest object in the solar system for real. I'm the largest satellite in the solar system seen. I orbit Jupiter. My name is Ganymede. Larger than Mercury, Pluto, and slightly smaller than Mars I'd be classified as a planet if I orbited our star My diameter is 3,273 miles I'm 26% larger than Mercury by volume with style It takes me roughly 7 days to orbit Jupiter at 665,000 miles, I assure I'm around the same age as my planet, Jupiter I'm 4.5 billion years old, I'm very mature Let's take a look inside and cut away my layers here Polar frost covers my surface, it did just appear Under my hexagonal ice, you'll find my saltwater ocean Then the tetragonal ice and rocky mantle within This is my iron and iron sulfate liquid core Followed by an iron core that's solid, you want facts, here some more I'm the largest satellite in the solar system seen I orbit Jupiter, my name is Ganymede Larger than Mercury, Pluto, and slightly smaller than Mars I'd be classified as a planet if I orbited our star I'm the largest satellite in the solar system seen I orbit Jupiter, my name is Ganymede Larger than Mercury, Pluto, and slightly smaller than Mars I'd be classified as a planet if I orbited our star Surrounded by a circumstellar disk My name is AG100546 I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disk From the constellation of Musca Now hear this my name is HG100546 I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet I'm a star with a circumstellar disk From the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU Now this I'm found in the constellation of Musca Hear this I'm a B-type star with an exoplanet that does orbit I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see It is HD 100546B I'm HD 100546B I was discovered at the Very Large Telescope in Chile Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf Located in the disk around my star on my orbital course I'm a gas giant exoplanet, they know this for sure My mass is 752 Jupiters One orbit takes 249 years around my star I'm 53 AU away from my star That is far My discovery was announced in 2014 That's all I have to report That's enough about me I am back again It's 
HD 100 546. Let me tell you a bit more about my disc. My circumstellar disc was observed by the Hubble telescope. Which should spiral patterns what they mean? No one really knows. My disc is fairly flat with a circular shape with a wide gap thought to be carved by my exoplanet. How great! When looking at the night sky, try to locate the constellation of Musca, but you have to look late. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc. My name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc from the constellation of Musca. Now hear this. My name is Rigel, a blue-white supergiant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. William Herschel studied astronomy in the year of 1781. He discovered me. I have an estimated age of seven to nine. Million years, as for an estimate, that's fine. I've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel, becoming a super giant after I expanded and I cool. I expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova. Here is more, leaving a neutron star or black hole, but no one knows for sure. I'm classified as a blue white super giant star, how fun! Which is a hot luminous star that's bigger than your sun. I belong to the Orion constellation Locate me from the celestial equator from Earth on my run I am visible throughout the world, of this I am sure Located in the hunter's leg of Orion, I assure From the Earth my distance is 860 light years to be clear One light year is the distance light travels in one Earth year 61,500 to 363,000 times as luminous as the sun My brightness is so grand But I'll vary slightly in brightness until the day I'm done I'm thought to be 18 to 24 times more massive than your sun. My radius is a straight line from my center to my circumference, which is more than 70 times that of your sun in reference. My surface temperature is 12,100 kK, meaning Kelvin, a base unit of temperature in the SI, I say. The next time you're out at night, look for Orion in the sky, look for the hunter's leg, I'm bright to the naked eye. My name is Rigel. A blue-white supergiant star In the Orion constellation I am the brightest so far My name is Rigel A blue-white supergiant star In the Orion constellation I am the brightest so far Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020 Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty Alignments between Jupiter and Saturn are pretty rare Only occurring around once in every 20 years but this upcoming conjunction's exceptionally rare Only because of how close we planets will appear It's said the last time this occurred was in medieval times In the year of 1226 was the closest that we aligned Alignments between these two planets happens once every 20 years But this conjunction will be very rare because of how close we appear We'll be aligning on the same day as the winter solstice On December 21st, 2020, the whole world can witness this If you live in the northern hemisphere, looking low in the southwestern sky You can see a shining bright shortly after sunset with the naked eye We'll appear extremely close for about a month ahead But we won't 
make such a close approach again until the year 2400. Typically, Jupiter orbits the sun every 12 years. Saturn's orbit around the sun takes about 30 years. Every couple of decades, Jupiter laps Saturn in flight. Be sure to watch the sky December 21st in 2020 at night. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass and 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far. And from a distance we're so close we look like one star. I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked I, though I'm the closest star by far I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and I'm the closest star to the sun for what that is worth discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins I'm sure in South Africa at the Union Observatory in Johannesburg my Latin name Proxima Centauri means when this is defined the nearest star of Centaurus that's all that's assigned we're Alpha Centauri the closest the star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C, officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. I'm the Crab Pulsar, a young neutron star. I'm Calvera, an isolated neutron star that's far. My name's Bela X1, I'm a neutron star as well. Sirius B, that's me, a small white dwarf as you can tell. I'm EBLMJ 555-57AB. My name's Trappist 1, an ultra cool red dwarf star in sight. I'm Proxima Centauri, a main sequence red dwarf star. I am your son, a yellow dwarf that isn't too far. Alpha Centauri A is an orange star, you see. I 
and serious AA main sequence star. That's me. We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. VFTS-352, contact binary 1 and 2, composed of two very hot brain massive stars that orbit each other, it's true. My name is Pollux, a red giant star here. Arcturus is a red giant star, I hope I made that clear. R-136A1 is a wolf riot star thus far. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Rigel is here, a blue-white supergiant you can see. I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red supergiant in class. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant star with mass. I'm U.I. Scutai, the biggest red supergiant this far. Join us to sing the chorus, now get your head out of the stars. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. I am UI Scutai, the largest star in our galaxy. Find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai, a red supergiant in the Scutum constellation. Am I? I was first cataloged in 1860 by German astronomers at Bonn Observatory. I was named BD-1250. Until my second survey I was found to be slightly more bright That's when I was named UI Scutai The 38th variable star of the constellation Scutum Am I? I'm the largest known star in the Milky Way galaxy But because I'm so far from Earth you need a telescope to see me I'm 30 times the sun's mass but I have a radius more than 1700 times greater than the Earth's sun I span I am UI Scutai The largest star in our galaxy Find me in the night sky I am UI Scutai a red supergiant in the Scutum constellation, am I? I'm 9,500 light years away from your Earth. One light year equals about 5.88 trillion miles for what that's worth. I'm known to be one of the most luminous stars, and I am a red supergiant. I hope you like me so far. I'm close to the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, galactic center, which is the center of our galaxy. Galaxy. I'm so large if you replaced your sun with me My photosphere would span past Jupiter's orbit as you can see I've begun to fuse helium and continue to fuse hydrogen in the shell around my core Based on models of stellar evolution After fusing heavy elements my core will begin to produce iron Disrupting the balance of gravity and radiation in its core And resulting in a core collapse supernova which is expected in stars like me Look for me in the night sky within your galaxy I am UI Scutai The largest star in our galaxy Find me in the night sky I am UI Scutai A red supergiant in the Scutum constellation Am I? I am UI Scutai the largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai, a red supergiant in the Scutum constellation. Am I?
I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I received the name Beetlejuice in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, an astronomer and a great scientist I'm the second brightest star in the Orion constellation after the star Rigel, we're seen from any of Earth's nations. My diameter's about 700 times that of your sun, and I'm 640 light years from the Earth, that's quite a run. But my surface temperature 6,000 degrees in Fahrenheit, cooler than your sun's surface 10,000 degrees, yeah that's right. I'm so massive if you replaced your sun with me, I'd reach past the orbit of Jupiter, I'm gigantic you see. I'm considered a young star at just 10 million years old soon to explode into a supernova scientists say so i am beetlejuice i'm nearing the end of my life one of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky i am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so a red super giant is an aging giant star that has consumed its core supply of hydrogen fuel that's what they are helium has a Accumulated in my core so well And hydrogen's undergoing nuclear fusion in my outer shells When my outer shells expand I take on a red color Because I'm cooler than I was I'm happy to discover Red supergiants are the largest known stars in the universe And I'm expected to supernova onto the next verse During fusion heavier atoms are created Until my core is iron That's when I'll run out of fuel without even been trying. When that happens to a star as massive as me, the entire star collapses and explodes as a supernova, you see. When I do supernova, I'll create quite a sight. Some predict I'll even look like your full moon's brightest light. The radiation I put off from becoming a supernova wouldn't affect Earth because I'm 640 light years over. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life. One of the top 10 and brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I am the Y Canis Majoris one of the largest stars known in the present universe I am the Y Canis Majoris my home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I'm believed to be discovered in 1801 when French astronomer Jerome Lalande locked me in my recordings begun. A red class M hypergiant's what I'm classified as. Now let's focus a bit closer on what makes up this star class. Hypergiant stars show tremendous luminosities and have very high rates of mass loss by stellar my distance from the Earth is about 4,000 light years away. One light year equals about 5.9 trillion miles, I'd say. I used to be the largest star in the universe, you see. Until some hyper giants like you, Ice Katai, dwarfed me. I am the Y Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am the Y Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course If you wanna locate me while looking up in the night sky You'd have to use the telescope, you can't see me with the naked eye If you have a telescope, point to the constellation of Canis Major And look to the left to the Delta Star for a fixation 990 million kilometers is my radius, aren't you glad you are paying attention? 822 degrees in Fahrenheit is what my temperature is thought to be I'm hot and extremely bright and If I replace the sun in your present solar system I would consume all planets past Jupiter like they were crumbs I am the Y Canis Majoris One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am the Y Canis Majoris 
My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course Massive stars like me, we live a very, very short life I'm reaching the end of my existence, which is part of my strife I rapidly shed mass because I'm running out of fuel in my course Scientists think I'll explode into a supernova, but no one knows for sure I am B.Y. Canis Majoris one of the largest stars known in the present universe I am V.Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course I am V.Y. Canis Majoris One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am V.Y. Canis Majoris my home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course.